Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel and uh, watching this video. If you'd make sure to hit the like button before you leave, that helps me out a lot. Uh, if you really like what you find here, uh, maybe check out some other videos and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you. Today, I thought I would do a little something uh, different from usual. Uh, lately, I've been doing some big uh, kind of uh, large scale projects that are more intermediate and advanced level. So I thought I'd do something simple and easy today for the beginner crowd out there. Um, before we get started though, I'd like to give a special shout out to my newest patrons over at uh, Patreon. Uh, Deborah E, Cheryl Ann, Warren, Paula, Reed M, Tim H, Edie, and Kim H. So I'm so thankful for all of your kind support. I'm really uh, amazed that you guys have all joined up already, and I appreciate it. Uh, look for your names at the end of the video. I'm going to put you in a little scroll thing. And uh, if you're not one of my patrons and you'd be interested in checking that out, uh, look at the link in the description of the video, and you can find out more about it. So let's get going. Okay, so being a simple project, we don't need too many materials for this one. Uh, I have some 10 gauge sterling square wire, which is pretty thick square wire, and that's going to make our band today. Um, so, uh, if you're new to my channel, as far as soldering goes, I use um, pretty much exclusively hard silver sheet solder. This is my flux, it's a spray on flux, and it's um, Mighty Flux from Rio Grande. It's pretty much the same as batter and self pickling flux if you have that available in your area. What we're going to do is make a, a just a simple ring with a twist, uh, but then to prevent it from being uncomfortable, we're going to grind away the inside in order to make it a nice, comfortable fit so that it still looks like a twist wire on the outside, but is smooth on the inside. Um, if I was doing a long piece of this wire, I would chuck it into the drill and just uh, twist it with the drill. However, since I'm just doing one ring and I'm going to make a short one, I'm going to hand twist it. And to do that, I'm going to use some C-clamps. Oh, as far as the size goes on this, I measured... So I measured to a 9 and then I added a little bit extra because when you make a ring uh, from something that's flat like this, but the ring actually has some depth to it, it's going to change the inside diameter a little bit. And that compensates for the size. Now the other thing I'm going to do with this ring is after I make it, I'm going to grind away part of the inside. So that's going to make it a little bit bigger. And so what I'm shooting for is like a nine and a half as far as size goes. We'll have to see how close we get. I've never uh, made one quite like this before, so we'll, we'll have to do a little science here and find out whether I, my predictions are accurate or not. So, um, so you can see I cut, I cut this about an inch longer than I need. And so that's so that I have a place to clamp these C clamps on. So I'm going to try and do it so that the twist I'm just barely getting a grab on it here. I want the edge of the C clamp right here to be more than a half inch in because I want that twist to kind of be natural all the way going out. So I don't care if I damage the wire a little bit on that end because we're going to cut that off anyway. One of the reasons I like to use C-clamps is if you use something with a softer uh, end on it, when you go to twist these things, it sometimes will turn in the, in the thing. So, But with these now, I, hopefully I have a good grip here and I can just start twisting it like this. You can kind of twist it to whatever however tight you want it to be. I think I'm going to stop about about there. That gives it a kind of a nice look. Maybe a little more. Yeah, let's do a little more. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop about there. Let's see if my piece of paper, that twist stays within that distance that I made it. So, there, there. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to pick a spot. Actually, first, what I'm going to do before I before I do anything else, because um, I'm going to need to trim this down to the right length now, 
Um, but before I do that, when I when I twisted this with those things, what it's doing is it's it's um, it's flexing the metal and twisting it. And what that does, uh, just like uh, when a blacksmith pounds, and this I'm kind of going that you might not know too much about this, if you're, especially if you're a beginner here. Uh, the more you work metal, most metals anyway, uh, the harder they get. They, they start to have some molecular changes to them. Uh, their molecules all line up, or atoms all line up, I should say, uh, into more of a structured form, and that makes them harder and more brittle. Um, and pounding on it, twisting it, bending it back and forth, all of that stuff does that. Uh, and sometimes you want it to be a little softer because right now when I did that it made this really pretty hard so it's going to be a little difficult to work with and in order to soften that back up again uh, you do a process called annealing and uh, all you really need to do is uh, heat it up to the point where it's kind of a dull red color and then just let it cool off and that uh, re-randomizes the atoms inside of the metal so that it's softer again, and then it'll be more manageable when we go to bend it. It's important to do the entire thing if I want the whole thing to be soft again. So I want to, it's getting close to where I want it to be. You can kind of watch the color of the metal. It gets kind of that dull red color as you move it along. So now we should be able to let it cool down a bit. I normally don't throw super red hot silver into water or pickle safe because it can crack when it changes temperature that suddenly. So I usually let it cool down for a while and then uh, and then I get impatient and then I stick it in the water to cool it the rest of the way. <laughs> okay, so now this should be a little more, yeah, that's a little more flexible. It's easier to bend. Okay, so before I do that though, let's cut it off to the right length. I'll put the X on this side so I know that that was the piece that I wrapped around the ring mandrel to get the size. I do that so I don't accidentally measure with the other side. I've seen a lot of people do that before. Okay. I'm going to go about there and there. going to file these flat. That's a flush cut uh, pair of wire cutters that I use. They're Zurons. Uh, I like them a lot, but the jaws aren't perfectly aligned, so even though it cuts relatively flat, it's got a lead. So you always have to file that off. Probably newer pairs would be a little better aligned liner. I have four or five of those floating around, and most of them are over 20 years old. So. Maybe I should invest in some new ones. Just file in a 90 degree angle here, as flat as possible. When I'm making a band, adding about an extra eighth of an inch on the length usually gets me pretty close to the size I'm shooting for. Sometimes when you're doing something that has a twist like this, it's hard to tell if the end is perfectly flat or not because the twist sort of throws your eye off. So, we'll do the best we can there. When I'm soldering something like these, it's always easiest to solder things in a straight line if you can. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bend this into a U shape around this. This is where the annealing will help. Okay. So kind of a squared off U shape like that. 
Now in theory, I already measured it, so I should be able to just solder it without worrying about size. But in order to get these ends together, I'm going to bend them so they're put some lotion, put some lotion on my hand, but now my hands are a little slippery. hadn't annealed that that would have been pretty much impossible to do so you can anneal things more than once too so if, if you find that when you um, bent it around here it almost got it there it's too hard to bend further you could stop anneal it again and then uh, bend it further I've done that with some really thick stock before but in this instance here uh, since we have a regular twist, I'd like it to meet up, and I got lucky on this one because it actually just met up pretty close to the right, uh, right spot, so it'll just can be a continuous twist around. If yours comes out to where it's misaligned a little bit, you're going to have to grab this side and this side and twist them slightly in order to get that twist to line up nice. So the other thing I'm going to do is in order to make sure that these guys are touching nicely even under the heat when I start to heat it up um, because of the nature of that work hardening when you start to heat it up it'll start to relax the metal again and if it does that it'll pull that apart a little bit and make it so that the solder won't flow between the two sides because you want the two sides to be touching so if they spread apart just enough to where they're not touching then it'll cause you to not have uh, an easy time getting the solder flow. Solder doesn't like to fill in empty space unfortunately. So um, I'm going to go ahead and push these past like that a little bit and then pull them back until they just pop into place like that. And then I can line that up a little better. Then we can give it a go on soldering and see how it works. It should be if you push it past like that and then pull it back to where it's springing together. That way, even if it relaxes under the heat, which it probably will, um, that springiness will make it so that it'll still be put or touching uh, the two sides together. So that that solves that problem pretty easily. So this one, I'm gonna drape a little piece of solder over that. <clears throat> after I flux it of course, but let's cut some solder. For bands like this one, I like to cut kind of a long skinny piece like this. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it around the outside of the round nose pliers like this a little bit. That way you get kind of a shaky today. Get it kind of a U shape. We can just lay that over that. But, like I said, we need to get it fluxed first. Let's get some flux on there. If you're new to this, getting things fluxed well is important and getting a good solder joint. If you ever have trouble getting your solder to play, it's probably you didn't flux it well enough. So I'm going to go ahead and, well, in theory, I'm going to put that on there. <laughs> okay. You can just heat it to the flow point. The thing that can go wrong is that it's kind of like you have two separate pieces coming together because the distance that the heat has to travel through the metal from side to side. And with silver, everything need, uh, needs to reach 1450 degrees, at least for this type of solder, in order for the solder to stick to it. So I want both sides to achieve that temperature at about the same time. If one side gets to that temperature before the other side does, the solder will just jump onto the side that 
reaches that temperature. So ideally they should hit temperature at about the same time. And in order to do that, you want to heat it relatively rapidly. If you go too, like sometimes I do it in a U shape like this. But if I do it too slow, one side will hit that temperature before, before the other. Sometimes they go in a circle. Either way works as long as only both sides hit at about the same time. Okay. So if you do have it to jump to one side or the other, it's because the side that it didn't jump to didn't quite reach temperature there. So that is a universal rule with Silversmith. So it looks like you got a reasonably good solder joint there. Um, I'm going to take it over to the Dremel and clean it up just a little bit with some abrasive wheels so it looks nice and smooth and then we'll round it out on the mandrel. So if you want to see uh, what I do to clean things up with the Dremel, I have a video. I'll put a link up there for it. You can check that one out. Uh, I did that so that I don't have to show the same thing over and over in every video. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing. <clears throat> okay, I just kind of cleaned up that solder joint a little bit so it didn't have any uh, puddliness. Now we can just put this back on the mandrel. All right. Hopefully you can see where I'm here. I'm just going to knock out these high points. Oops. Normally I do this on my knee, and so I may do some of it on my knee. I want you to see the basic idea. Okay, it'll be easier for me to hit on my knee now, so I'm just going to set it on my knee. I'll hold it at the top here and kind of really round it out that way. Okay, I got it roundish. Now, in order to make it comfortable, I'm going to grind out the inside here so that it's got a nice smooth inner surface. And then we'll pickle it and polish it. So, I guess I'll take you over to my Dremel area this time. So I normally use these uh, knife edge white abrasive wheels uh, that are silicone or silicone, but they have uh, an abrasive grit in them. I, I, a while back I bought some of these wide ones like this, and I haven't figured out a use for them, but I think this might be a perfect use for them. Um, when you're using these to grind material away, um, these white ones are the most aggressive ones, and they have color-coded ones, like I have some blue ones here. Uh, these ones are some of the finer ones, so they kind of polish more than grind away. But these white ones are the really uh, abrasive ones, so we'll just run it around the inside. so I can touch it again. All right, let's see if I can get this up close where you can see. So I've kind of ground a flat spot all the way around the inside. And I may do a little bit of cleaning up on the solder joint. Where, where is that? Right here with the little um, jeweler's file. Like this before I polish it. Make sure those lines are line up with the other ones nicely. And then I think once you polish it, it should be really hard to tell that it was ever not round like this. All right. So, and I'm curious to see how close we got on size there. It's just a little over nine, so I, I underestimated how much removing that material would do to change the size of it. So, uh, so expect uh, if you measure for a nine uh, the way you normally would, uh, it'll probably come out to be just slightly bigger than that. So, or if you measure for a seven, it'll probably be just slightly bigger than a seven. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, heat this up and pickle it, and. Uh, 
then I'll polish it and I will bring you back what it looks like. So. Okay, all polished up. If you want to see the details of how I get this good of a polish on it, uh, I'll put a link up there to up there to my uh, polishing video. It's a little bit. It's one of my earlier videos, so the sound quality may be a little bit bad, but the information's good. So, yeah, check it out. Mm -hmm.